I had emailed them um, uh, for a copy. <laughs> Saying yeah. you like posting. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was a fan. Yeah. And then we did the, uh, yeah, when we chat for and then we did this horror festival last year. So, yeah. He was supposed to stay with me in Los Angeles when he was doing stuff for his book. Show the people your book, Tom. Huh? Oh, yeah, so I was gonna get, but I didn't get to hang out with him. Yeah, but yeah, I had to. I was Jamie a... Duval, mate. Like five <laughs> hours. You know, <laughs> and then he fucked off for another half an hour. Like, <laughs> I wasn't there. I don't. <laughs> I don't know Jimmy Duval to ever be late for anything. No. No. Oh. <laughs> Jimmy's a beautiful human being. <laughs> but he'd never be late. It's just, I don't, I've never heard of such activity. <laughs> It was funny, like, I, I, I was the only one that was like, I'm not gonna say trap there, because it was a blast, but I was there for two days, but every other, like, you know, I was just doing stunts, I'm no, I'm, you know, but I'm, I'm no celebrity to begin with, but everybody else who, like, starred in the music video was, like, just showed up and was there for, like, an hour, oh, wow. 45 minutes, and then left. <laughs> like, Tyler and Derek, they did their scenes, it's like three hours left. Danny Trejo literally was on set for about, 30 to 40 minutes. Then he came back the next day to see the live performance because I because uh, Rolling Stone was there and stuff and they wanted to interview him. But they kept saying that he's the star of the video and he's not. Um, Jason Trost is the star yeah, 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 yeah. of the video, the dude with the eye patch. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, because I uh, Nick worked with Jason. Um, have you ever heard of Film FP? The FP? No, 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 no. Check it out. It's all Superheroes Must Die, have you heard of that one? No. Have you heard of He did those two. Yeah, he's great. He's got, he's got, he's got an eye patch. Yeah, he's brilliant. He's in Hatchet 3 all the time. <laughs> it's literally the coolest <laughs> coffee table book ever. I have I have two coffee table books. I have a Mad Max one and that one. And anybody that comes over my place picks up that book. But yeah, so the stuff that I do is kind of like describing it's like, uh, what the Stones are doing, the Stones are into blues music, so they started to do the, play their blues music to turn people back onto it. So that's what I was sort of aiming to do. This is such a nostalgic throwback thing because, like, you know, most kids and teenagers will never know the mom and pop video yeah, store. Yeah, yeah. The, like the family run the, the, the any video store at this point like I think you know kids don't even have Blockbuster anymore yeah, yeah, yeah. like they don't have that experience of walking into the store and, and that was and, how like, you see it films, you know man. and that's yeah and, and it's just so funny because like like a million people whoever picks up the book and they're going through it they're just like I've seen the cover of this movie my whole life but I've never seen the movie <laughs> you know what I mean like you know they, they recognize the art another thing that I really love was that um you know, in Europe or the UK, a lot of times the art in the title is different from the American version, you know? And yeah, that well that was the thing, because this is all UK-based artwork, and it was like artwork that hadn't been seen yeah. over in the UK, and would never, US, sorry, it would never be seen in the US before. And it mm. was good stuff, because the UK video market was, uh, was one of the most successful and quickest growing markets, because there were more VHS players per person in the UK than were at anywhere else in the world when it first started out. So more people were seeing films on video, and uh, then that gave birth to a big independent market that was then being able to churn out these films that would, would have only had outlets in, in, in I mean, Did someone make that baby like, shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> I'll kill the shit out of that kid. <laughs> Shut that. I got into a movie because of a man named Robert Muse. <laughs> Very he's a larger I man than I am. He's awesome. He motivates me every day. <laughs> really? Yeah. He's very healthy. He goes to the gym a lot. And he auditions like crazy. He's a very hard worker. He's a strong fucker. He's three inches taller than I am. And another, like, see, like, he's coming out of nowhere. <laughs> he's like a ninja, too. <laughs> Ooh, big and ninja. He's doing a special Blu-ray version of The Accused. <laughs> His favorite romantic comedy, The Accused. Special dude poster coming soon. <laughs> it's just Jodie Foster on it. 
pinball machine passed out and shattered. <laughs> Isn't that Rami movie like Thou Shalt Not Kill Except? That's got uh, Sam Raimi. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Is that the movie he's talking about? Yeah, I don't. No, Thou Shalt that Not film. Kill really Except? See that film. It's that. awful but awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. I remember I didn't see it for a long time because the DVD was worth like 80 bucks. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, it's but, but it's like anytime like a DVD becomes like rare and expensive, that means somebody's gonna really see it. But, you know. But, um,. Yeah, that movie's rad. Oh, oh, he's looking. Oh God, I don't know. I don't. I don't even own a VCR anymore. When I was when I was a kid, uh, complete honesty, I worshipped Halloween Four. I outplayed that that tape. And uh, above the law, like Steven Seagal, I abused that fucking VHS <laughs> tape. Both of those, I, I played so much that they, they just snapped somewhere. <laughs> and, um, and like ha Halloween 4, when I was a little kid, I would um, I would make audio recordings of it and like listen to it when I was like out. Mind you, is it, what, someone sent me a link to one of the Steven Seagal, if it was either his first one, the Nico, or the one that just talked about. It's so fucking bad. Man. Nico? Yeah, yeah. We, the, none of the American versions are called Nico. His name was that in Out for Justice and yeah, Above yeah, yeah. the Law. Okay, yeah, it was one. Of, yeah, which one? Hard was to first? Kill. All the movies would, had three words in it. Oh, oh right, yeah. Well, well hard to Kill. Like Mark for Death. Nico. Nico. It was this, that his first one? Above the Law. Sharon Stone's in it. Oh, okay. Sharon Stone's in it. So bad. This one clip of the action is really yeah. cheesy. I think he's remembering something. Right. The way it does it. Is, is, oh yeah, so no, bad. he does like the the the, the Aikido flashback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like to him training. Who has it? I don't know if it's true because it's a rumor. Um, was supposedly like like two really famous movie executives were like getting a massage or something, and they're like, "I can make anybody famous in this town." <laughs> like you know, he's like just give me the thing, and then the guy's like, "Oh yeah," he's like, "We'll make this guy famous." And it was like a twenty thousand dollar bet. Like there's this Aikido guy. Like he's like, "I'll make him an action star." And then it was like, oh, 20, like, who knows? The dude's a legitimate Aikido guy. He's just I, everybody I've ever heard of, and I've been in close proximity. He didn't he, he didn't do anything bad to me, but every every stuntman I know that fucking hates working with him. Hates it like like he, they were doing these rehearsals, and he he just straight up kicked a guy in the balls, <laughs> like just like. Like it was a rehearsal, it wasn't even on camera. And he just straight up kicked him in the balls and looked at him. He's like, You're not wearing a cup? <laughs> and then the man's like, Oh, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I don't know. This is the famous story too about Gene LaBelle, Judo Gene LaBelle choking him out right. and Steven Seagal pooping himself? <laughs> <laughs> you know that one, right? Everybody yeah. knows that one. Yeah. It's like but, Gene, but Gene is such a sweetheart when he tells a story, like, he doesn't curse, right. he never curses. <laughs> And he's like, <laughs> he's like, you oh, know, so I had Steven in the, the you know, rear naked choke and he kind of did a sidestep and did like a you know, axe handle in my family jewels and I don't know, that must have made him real tired because right after that he went to sleep. <laughs> you know, well, that's his take on it. Not a bad guitar player. I, I saw him at a Les Paul tribute one time. He played with like, I'm not much of a blues enthusiast, but I think it was like Buddy Guy or something like that. But he like jammed on stage with me, like he held his own. Uh, he's tall too. Yeah, these are things I've taken away. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's big. Yeah, he's, he's tall. He's got a very extreme hairline. A lot of actors are shorter than you think. 